Well, I made it back from the junkyard with the parts from the launcher here. Just uh, the core support, driver's side headlight, sensor here and there, and that fan shroud. It is behind the core support there. Go ahead and get it all reassembled. I could not find any matching bumpers or hoods, or a bumper and hood in bumper and hood in general that I could repaint to match. Nothing whatsoever. So another day. Let's get to it. And here we are, finally back with the front end parts. I finally found some paint match stuff, uh, bumper and hood. Like I said before, I'm trying to do it on the cheaper side for a friend. Save her some money, and myself, of course. So, we found the paint match bumper and hood. The hood does have a little bit of some bubbly surface on it. Overall, not bad. But, uh, as you'll see here, for support on, as you saw before, fan shroud, of course, the air intake. The nostrils are sitting up here. They normally mount up here and connect to the airbox down there, but I'm waiting to put on the front bumper here. Got the fogs from the old bumper because they are crystal clear. Those put up in there and mount, ready to go. Nice new grill in there, everything's fresh. Slightly foggy headlights, of course, you know. She has an old car, I believe it's an 09. But I tried to save the fenders as much as I could, roll them out. They are not beautiful, of course, but overall the fender itself is still in good condition, so. I ruined the whole thing over the corner. Of course, you know, would not consider myself a professional by any means, nor is it too beautiful. But the gaps are seeming to line up once I put the hood on. That's when I'll really have to line everything up, of course, on the sides. So it'll get kind of interesting. But uh, before I get in the hyperlapse, I know some of you like to see a more in-depth sort of look at it. Basically, we're just hanging up the bumper here. It's going to hang up, put the nostril and take on two 10 liter bolts, then uh, the push clips that we all love will go in the sides here, then along the side we'll be putting these clips in with the bumper on both sides, then there'll be an 8 millimeter bolt on either side holding the bumper on the corner up into the fender. Make sure you plug the fogs back in, get the skid panel underneath reconnected to the front bumper, Get the hood lined up, of course, like I said before. Make sure everything's lined up good, and then we'll take her for a drive. Of course, you guys don't need to see the whole driving experience, but we'll get in a hyperlapse and see if we can get her looking somewhat decent here. So I actually didn't realize till just earlier, I've been filming in vertical the entire time, and to realize that some of you don't entirely enjoy that, my bad, I'm still like, you know, learning certain things I guess but like my format normally I'm holding my phone a lot like vertical so I, I tend to form to film like that uh, some people like watching videos like that some watch horizontal uh, trying to work on filming everything horizontally but it's so hard to get in the habit of that because of course you know me being Gen Z I'm a big TikTok guy film a lot of stuff vertically but uh <laughs> Now we got the bumper and the hood back on the car. Headlights in, new grill on. Does need cleaned up, of course. I'm gonna take the whole car to the car wash and detail and everything. Make it look pretty, you know. It deserves it. It's a good color, it needs to pop. A lot of flake in there. Now we got the hood on though. I had a question the other day from a friend of mine about setting gaps. So this is where it gets a bit interesting. You wanna grab like your average hand tools. In my case, it's gonna be a 13 millimeter. And then just snug them up just enough to where they're holding the hood in place. Or whether you're working with a fender, if your bumper has multiple mounts, etc. Go ahead and put you up this way real quick while I take the hood prop out. Put it back down on the clip. They are snugged in place currently. You'll see the little blemish I was talking about on the hood. Not too pretty. We'll look at the gaps along the side. Make sure they're not like too small before I close the hood. I don't want to smash anything. You'll notice like this one's getting pretty tight, especially up towards the top right there. That's a real tight gap. So we're gonna do 
what we're going to want to do is we're going to raise the hood back up, loosen all the bolts for the fender in the rear and kind of space it back out. Whereas this one's a pretty large gap right here, about a quarter inch, and it looks like it gets about down to almost three eighths even. We we'll want to get those gaps a little bit tighter. You want your gaps a little less than a quarter inch, between about a quarter and eighth, just like that. That's about a factory gap width. It's normal. Looks good. Looks clean. Doesn't look chintzy like. They didn't take any time to put thought into it. But this, it's tight, it's about a 16th. Once that hood closes, it's not gonna have a very good time. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the hood back up and we'll work on adjustments. Get you set up in the stand real quick. Well, I just set up here, we'll move you a little bit closer. So now that we're working with this hood gap here, you can really get the visuals on this one. See how tight that hood gap is now? So we'll put the hood back up. Put the hood prop in place, of course. And then now we gotta get to all the fender bolts. So I have to take this old plastic cover off, get down in there. Just a little plastic screw, one of those body pins here, work its way out, set that down, get this thing out of here, I believe it's held in by just a little spread pin, yeah, there we are, shimmies out the back, there we are, see it's held in by that little pin there, and it hooks along the body around the corner here, so now let's see what I'm looking at, it's just 10 millimeters, I seem to have misplaced my ratchet. Give me a sec here. I'm all over the place. So now that I think I have the hood in around the right place, for now we're going to work on adjusting the fender because it has been adjusted before. So I'll see if I can work on just adjusting the fender outwards. No biggie. You want to work with hand tools, of course. I don't want to go in with crazy amounts of power hurt this thing. The front end will move out a bit, but the rear seem to be pretty tight. So we'll just pull the fender out, tighten it back up. It was really tight up this way, which it looks like it's still going to be. Give it a slight pull to move those body mounts outwards. Nothing too aggressive. We'll move the ratchet out of the way. This may have not done a whole lot. I do still have to adjust the hood completely. It's a slight amount farther out. That's a little better. It's still pretty skinny up this way, though. The hood needs to come, like, shift a little bit. Like, it needs to tilt itself. If you look over on the driver's side over here, you can see the gap's pretty fair. So it looks like if I take the Put off the latches themselves and actually shift the whole thing over. Should be able to snug this gap up a little bit and share the love to this side. So we'll see if we can work on that one real quick. This is where it gets interesting as far as adjustments. Remember, just small increments. I don't want to go crazy here. Nothing too aggressive, and if you make too many adjustments, we're not going to know how to go back if you end up messing yourself up and put yourself in a position that you don't want to be in. Okay, we'll just loosen these real quick. Seem like I got a whole lot of movement out of those. Not sure. I'm gonna try the driver's side real quick. I know you guys can't see this. The 
once again, I'm not a body man, of course. I'm sure you could tell throughout the video. By no means have any clue about gaps and such. That's what I have a brother for. I'm more of a, an electrical mechanical guy. Jesus, I've always been. But uh, we're getting closer. It actually seems like the gap is really fair right here. But it needs to come out still at the top. I feel like I want to actually somehow tilt the hood itself. I'm going to close the hood here and we'll see. Yeah, it seems like the latch needs to come up and the, tilt, the hood itself needs to move over and slightly. Of course, you know, when your car gets reassembled, it's never going to be perfectly the same after damage like that. But we're going to try as hard as we can. So we don't have to be too, too ugly. It's not already got, you know, blemishes it didn't have before, but... Better than what it once was, shall we say. Now a friend on the car, of course. It's back to being one color. Of course, all the panels are extremely dirty, so we'll have to get a real good visual later on. But I'm going to go ahead and get in a bit of a hyperlapse of this hood gap here, because I'm going to be all over the place. I'm not going to lie to you. Let's get to it. I don't know about where I'd like now. This one's a little bit wider than I'd like up towards the tip. But remember the fenders have all have also been bent out bent inwards slightly after they were bowed outwards from the wreck. Gap is consistent the whole way up though, it's a nice width. Same on this side, gap is consistent, it's a real nice width, it stays clean the whole way up. Besides, of course, with a little bit of the fender, it gets wider up top, just the slightest amount. Overall though, front of the car is back together. Give her a wash and make sure everything's solid. Clearly it just does need a wash, so not only is the hood dirty, but things covered in salt. It's been sitting for a little while now. Very unloved. Get back to you. Well, I guess that concludes the rebuild of the wrecked Elantra. She's happy. I'm happy. I got to help a friend out. I didn't film any of like uh, her reaction or her picking it up. I wasn't sure how she was going to do. Bless I'm not very good at like filming with people yet i don't know i can film in front of them but not with them if that makes sense still working on certain things i guess it's a bit of we could call social anxiety i'm sure but besides the fact uh i'm sure you've noticed this whole entire video was filmed vertically it's a bit of my bad that's uh kind of like what i've been used to so if that's something that bothers you i'm gonna work on fixing that next time i'm going horizontally but for now, I guess for this video, we're going full vertical. And this thing, we'll be working on horizontal. That's what we'll be working on next time. Getting the subframes stripped down. Getting them powder coated here soon. You'll see them when they're all bright and shiny. Let's get to it.